de ba ye kene ni mono no bose nketa ai si na ya de ndi bona ma ta di ko si de um ya bo ibo media ka isi wene o tero ni ya bo nu ko zi di o kempa eh basta ma ka ni ibo and ibo community and ye de bena nigeria ya bi fika ina o tero na ibo media eh di ko isi we de so la yo bona nka bo o bosi zigi ina bi na ni lo akwo na ibo media eka baro ka e subscribe bo and turn on your notification ke la pe miss any of our update di ka ni ti pe ni ba popo kwa mbe kwa mbe e di ko si de o wuri ya wete do no bo sin keta bo stamaka ka ya bi face ada and bo stamaka ka ya bi face abato na ni igbo e bi ko ma cho ki ge ya bi fe ya bo bi from prime minister ma zi samon e pa o wo di foku ni ro kwọ ma choko nge onu ge se bi fe ona drop ora ifu nche ni ro awọ ba samaki yenda ni no wu alright over to you sir good evening fellow bia france in africa good evening lovers of freedom good evening ladies and gentlemen of the press the cabinet members of the biafra republic government in exile and of course the cabinet members of the Biafra de facto government in the homeland. Before I go forward, I would like to bring in our uh, lobbyist, Elias, talk to us, talk to Biafrans in Africa for a couple of minutes, and then after him, I will uh, I will come with my speech. Oh, thank you, uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, it is an absolute honor. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, very thoughtfully inviting me to uh, this forum uh, with the Biafrans in Africa. Uh, it is a great honor to speak to uh, all Biafrans across Africa here from Washington, D.C. Uh, as the Prime Minister noted, I am the uh, one of the lobbyists for the Biafra Republic Government in Exile in Washington, D.C. We started our relationship with the uh, Biafran government in June 15th, and within this short two-month period, uh, I think we've uh, made great headway and achieved many results, uh, meeting with important uh, stakeholders, uh, senior uh, uh, former State Department officials, members of the United States Congress, and other leading personalities. This has already gotten notice from the Nigerian government. You know, so when I visited the beautiful uh, office in uh, Maryland, Prime Minister, you have had a quite uh, you've established quite a beautiful office there, and I think everyone should be proud of that that office. It's it's uh, quite a spectacular uh, office in in Maryland. Uh, but I said when I gave my speech in Maryland uh, that the zoo is afraid of me, and they should be afraid of me. And recently, they've admitted this. The zoo has admitted this. There was an article. Um, yesterday, where one of these Nigerian uh, papers, where they used the word panicked, that they were panicked about the lobby. So they are openly admitting that they are afraid of what we're doing, of the support we're getting here in the United States for the Biafran cause. You know, the, the uh, Nigerians have openly admitted that. And uh, trust me, you know, they say they're panicking, but we will make sure they panic more and more. So i uh, i'm very uh, optimistic um uh, in terms of the progress we're making uh and what we're doing is also having reverberations uh across the world uh one of my other uh clients that I represent is the air train government in exile uh, i brought the president of the air train government in exile to uh the headquarters we've established a very good uh, collaboration and also and the uh, air train uh, government in exile and its president uh, uh, recognizes uh, uh, the Biafran Republic government in exile, uh, recognizes uh, the, the independence of Biafra, and there have been some news articles about this as well in terms of a major breakthrough, so a major diplomatic breakthrough. So uh, we're trying to uh, get support uh, for the uh, Biafra Republic government in exile from quarters all over the world. Uh, both, of course, primarily from the U.S. government, but hopefully having that reverberate to other governments as well. So, uh, you know, we're using all of our uh, contacts with governments all across the world to uh, support uh, the Biafran cause, and we've uh, gotten one uh, uh, African government so far to support the cause. So I I'm extremely uh, excited about our prospects moving forward over the next few months. You uh, have an exceptional leader. 
uh, and the Prime Minister, who's a, a remarkable individual. Uh, we've made a lot of progress here in D.C. The zoo is, again, uh, they've admitted that they are in a panic. Uh, they don't know what to do with themselves. Uh, and, and so I, I am very optimistic uh, about the future. And uh, we have a lot more uh, ahead of us. Uh, we have a lot more planned, a lot more activities they're doing. So, you know, if they're, if they're complaining about how they're panicked now, uh, they don't know what's going to hit them dur during the next few months. So uh, I want to assure all my uh, 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 Biafran uh, counterparts uh, throughout Africa and around the world that we are being very well received here in Washington, D.C. by policymakers at the highest level of the U.S. government. Uh, the prime minister is being very well received. He's well respected. Uh, our message is getting across. And so I, uh, I anticipate we'll receive more and more support uh, from the United States government. And of course, uh, that's why uh, the zoo is uh, so afraid. And they should be afraid. They should be afraid. So uh, it's a great honor to be here with all of you. If you want to follow our uh, lobbying activities, uh, the Prime Minister uh, posts many of those activities in terms of these high-level meetings and engagements on his Twitter or X handle. So I encourage all of you to uh, follow the Prime Minister's Twitter to monitor uh, the uh, meetings uh, uh, that the Prime Minister has with U.S. officials. So uh, I just want to reiterate, it's a great honor uh, to be on this call. Uh, it is an honor to represent and to promote the uh, Biafran cause. Uh, and I look forward to everything that we'll achieve together. And long live a free Biafran. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, my fellow Biafrans, friends, and well wishers that uh, are observing this uh, uh, tour of Africa today. Uh, I am not here to make long speech, as usual. I'm just here to change the dynamics of everything. Today, I want to use this opportunity to announce to entire Biafrans all over the world our next phase of the Biafra liberation. The next phase of the Biafra liberation is the forceful delegitimization of the Nigeria terrorist state within Biafra land. What do I mean by this? Our next phase is enforcement. Enforcement of the closure and the lockdown of every presence of Nigeria for the next one month. Our next one month lockdown is going to be enforced. For the very first time in the history of the Biafra liberation, we are enforcing the lockdown of Nigeria within Biafra territory for one month. What did I say? Enforcement. We are going to use force. The Biafra Liberation Army for the very first time will engage the Nigeria terrorists in quest to push them out of our land and we are going to have a test. The test will be for complete one month. We will lock down the offices. The offices to be locked down in Biafra land will be listed in days to come. We're going to list all of them so that nobody will say they don't know about it. And of course, we will make sure that civilians in Biafra land are protected. Our guns and ammunitions and arms will never go against civilians. This targeted eviction and delegitimization of Nigeria has become a must. It has become inevitable as we continue to fight the terrorists within our land our aim and objective is to completely eradicate Nigeria. And of course, we are going to have a test of what is to come after December 2nd. So, the announcement for the one month lockdown of Nigeria system within Biafra land will, will come in a week or two weeks to come. We will give you the date from when to when, and of course, also list the offices that will be locked down for one month in Biafra land. And like I said, we will enforce it. We will enforce it with force because we are fighting a terrorist state with guns. And of course, one of those offices will be barracks. One of those offices will be police stations in under Nigeria. One of those offices will be government houses. So you don't need ordinary stick to enforce that. It is a test that the whole world will sit and witness. 
The time has come that our own freedom is taken. Our future is in our hand. And what we are doing today is to make sure we protect the life of our women and children. So my fellow Biafrans, in the coming weeks, I want everybody to pay attention to the updates that will be coming from our handles. The delegitimization of Nigeria within our land is taken to the next level. And there's going to be enforcement. And remember, if we do not destroy Nigeria today, Nigeria will destroy us. If we do not end the terrorist state of Nigeria, the terrorist state of Nigeria will end us. We cannot see and sit and watch a state that kills its own citizen, that have no regard to human dignity and have no regard to women and children. That kind of state is not a state anybody can support. We've seen the massacre of Biafrans, massacre of Christians, massacre of many indigenous nationalities in other parts of Nigeria. They are as human as us. They have nobody to speak for them. They have no government in exile like you do. They have no Mazen and Bikano like you do. They have no Simon Epa like you do. They have no cabinet members in the government in exile. They have no de facto government in the homeland. Nobody speaks for them. Nobody fights for them. They have no liberation army. They have no resistance fighters. They have nobody to defend them. And these people are getting killed every day. We need to make Nigeria very, very uncomfortable. And believe me, the more Biafra fight Nigeria, the more we save life in other parts of the country, especially the life of those Christians who have nobody to speak for them. We are going to draw these people to our land and neutralize them. Like Mazen Amdikano said, that's exactly what we're going to do. So I want every Biafra to understand that during this one month lockdown of the Nigeria terrorist state institution in Biafra land, our businesses will be flourishing. People will go to work. Those that are Biafrans, if you are have, if you are a business person in Biafra land, you will go to your shop, go to your market. Nobody will disturb you. We will make sure that your market will be protected. We will make sure that nobody will attack you in the market. We will make sure that when the terrorist army and police come, we will be in the street. The first time the Biafra forces will be on the street. This is going to be this one month that is coming. So our market will open. Our businesses will open. And let me also tell you that when people say that, oh, Simon Ekpa is now, uh, you know, attacking the government directly. You think we will start attacking the, the government from the beginning? It is a step by step. It is a gradual process. We have come to the point that we have conditioned the Biafra people. We have conditioned those in our land and our people know exactly what we are doing, why we are fighting for them and the reason they have to obey and also give their trust and loyalty to the Biafra government. And today, we've succeeded in delegitimizing Nigeria, and they are no longer, uh, you know, uh, answerable to any government, any Nigeria government officials. I want to also announce to Biafra people that we have recorded over 50 million votes today. Over 50 million votes in the Biafra self-referendum. Can you beat that? Over 50 million votes. And I want you to understand that these 50 million people has given us their mandate. They have signed and said, Fight for us. We have given you the mandate. Fight for us. That's exactly what it means. And for that, we are going to test run the lockdown of the Nigeria system within Biafra land. What I'm saying, take it very seriously. I said enforcement is against Nigeria terrorist army, against Nigeria terrorist state, against Nigeria terrorist air force, custom, anybody wearing uniform and carrying gun under Nigeria. You are a terrorist in our land. And this one month, we will use it to test you what is to come on the 2nd of December. Biafra has come. We will fight our way out. And this fight is in accordance with how we want it, when we want it, and how we are going to want it. It's not about Nigeria dictating how we fight it, like they did in 1967 and 1970. We will never go into conventional war with Nigeria. We have designed a way to defeat them. And it is guerrilla warfare, and of course, they know what it means. We will never ever allow the Nigeria state to continue to kill our women and children like I have done in the past. So my brothers and sisters, fellow citizens of Biafra, we have come to defend our land, our life, we are fighting for survival. It is a fight to finish. And I want you to understand that the fallen kingdom has risen. Thank you. Power to the Biafra Liberation Army. Power to the Biafra Defense Forces. Airborne to Airborne. all the fighters. The time has come. We will test Nigeria and the world we know what they have been hiding for the past two years. It will be open. Goodbye, Dalule Nenu Kunusi, Wene Serena, Ibo Media, Dikunusi Nesela, 
Ais na chuko kambi ya mapolo mgini na ya gosyo nini na ufu na ufu. Achua ya kuro chua kwa ya dedede. Isa. 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 E, Kapa kwa alo. E, Kiti ya alo nkegina. Iye nini na ubastama ka. Iye. E, Biafran Prime Minister kukasi. Niru waku kwa. Anandu wazo di shiche. Kapa alo kiti ya alo nkegi ficheru. Na udi nkegi. Ubastama ka ya bife. Um, dika ino kwa neche kwa udinanya na mazina mekano ya pata ogenada anya na nono mbalo asi na chukua kabi ya magenye yike na hili ya chukua baya manaye kudo chua kwa ya adiridi isa 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 thank you and also stay tuned at eastern news 24 kemesia nondibaya